Good day and welcome to this step-by-step -step tutorial in which I will show you how easy you can create recordings of your own voice to be used as voice data set to train your own artificial text-to-speech or TTS voice. And all of this is completely free and done on your local desktop computer. So no cloud, no internet required. And we will use Piper Recording Studio for this. Let's start with what is this voice data set? Obviously, you need recordings of your personal voice to train an artificial personal voice. But what is this voice data set? It is mainly a combination of the WAV file recordings of your own voice and a textual transcription of the spoken words, mostly in a CSV format. And one of the most well-known and best supported structures is this so-called LJ speech voice data set, which is recorded by Linda Johnson, so LJ for Linda Johnson, and packed as this voice data set by Keith Ito. The structure is really super simple. So you have a metadata.csv file with on the first column the name of the WAV file and in the second column the spoken text. And you have a subdirectory called WAVs containing all the individual WAV file audios. And um, during my personal Torsten voice recording sessions, I've made lots of mistakes and really lots of mistakes. So I will share some of my lessons I've learned the hard way by the end of this video to give you an idea on how your personal voice data set will look by the end of this video. Let's take a closer look to a demonstration voice data set I've prepared for this video. So for this, let's take a look to my Visual Studio code. And uh, we have this super simple structure. We have this waves or WAFs uh, subdirectory just containing all the individual WAV file audio recordings, in my case with a unique identifier automated generated uh, file name, and a metadata CSV file, as you can see here, on the first column, there is this just the pure file name without the .wav suffix, and split by the pipe character, the spoken text in this specific WAV file recording, and another pipe and the text in lower characters, just in case this column contains upper and lower cases combined. And that's basically all this simple LJ speech file and directory structure, which is really widely supported by lots of text to speech communities. And as we use Piper Recording Studio, which is by the way part of the Raspberry project, you do not have to struggle on how to create this LJ speech file and directory structure yourself. This is all done by Piper Recording Studio automatic. And I will put a link to a video tutorial I've made on how you create your own text to speech voice using Piper in the description box below. But now it's time to take a closer look to Piper Recording Studio, how you set it up and how you use it. For this, let's start with the GitHub page of the Raspberry project and Piper Recording Studio. And uh, let's scroll a little bit down to the readme. Piper Recording Studio is a simple locally running web application, which makes it really easy to record your own voice for the purpose of training your own text-to-speech personal voice. And you can run it simply in two different ways. On the one side, as you can see here, you can simply run it as prepared Docker container instance, which is really easy if you have a Docker environment already running at home, or maybe you have a network attached storage and NAS system that supports running Docker containers. Uh, but please let me know in the comment box below if I should make a tutorial on how you set up Docker or Piper Recording Studio in a Docker environment. But for today's technical walkthrough, I would like to focus on the manual way without Docker. Let's go a little bit more down and check installing without Docker. At first we have to clone the repo, so please make sure you have git installed on your local system and start by opening a command line window. Let's go in a new folder. So in this YouTube demonstration directory, there's just this demo voice data set I've shown you earlier in this video. And now let's clone this repository. Cloning completed. Switch into the directory and create 
a Python virtual environment. And please make sure you have Python already installed. I'm using Python in version 3.11. So let's run this. Python minus mvenv. Maybe you have to check on your local environment if this is Python 3 or just Python, as it's in my case. Once the creation of your Python virtual environment is done, we have to activate this environment. And this is a little bit different on Windows as it's printed here in the documentation. So uh, if you are on Linux or macOS, this is probably the way to go. But on Windows, we have to run in this vnf directory scripts. And this is an activate batch file. So let's run this command. Let's move it a little bit more here. And now, as you can see by this brackets.vnf, we are now inside this Python virtual environment. And as I've made in lots of my other videos, let's start by taking a look to the Python packages that are installed in this newly vnf environment. And pretty simple. And now let's update our package management. So update pip. And this again is on Windows a little bit different than in the description. So let's update our Python package index management by using this command. And as you can see, we have uninstalled pip in version 23.1.2 and installed it in 23.2.1. Looks similar, but is newer. <laughs> and as pip is up to date now, let's install all the packages that are listed in the requirements.txt file. By this, let's run pip install minus r requirements.txt. And by the way, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you have not done already, and let me know in the comment box on what you think and which topic suggestions you would like me to make a video tutorial about. And in general, thank you all for your great support. All required packages have been installed, so let's check our pip list again. And now, as you can see, the list is definitely longer. Go back to the documentation and see what's next. We have to run Python with that module Piper Recording Studio. So let's copy this. And again, check on your local system if Piper 3 or Piper without the version number is correct, as in my case. And when you see this message, you are ready to go. So you can hit localhost on port 8000. And here we are. Welcome to Piper Recording Studio web user interface. One nice aspect of Piper Recording Studio is that it brings out of the box text corpus for multiple languages. So you do not have to struggle, which text can I record myself? So just choose your personal language. Let's make English. English United States. And hit start recording. Enable microphone access, obviously. Choose your microphone if you have multiple microphones connected or just grant access to your microphone. And now we are ready to record. And as you can see by this fancy uh, effect now, Piper Recording Studio has access to the microphone. And here we have this text to be recorded. So let's give it a try. Having complete focus on the receipt and not allowing yourself to be distracted by your thoughts can have theropodical effects. So probably not the best English pronunciation, but uh, it's just a demonstration, so it's okay. And after you've recorded this special phrase, I'd recommend you to listen to your recording before you continue with the next recording. Having complete focus on the receipt and not allowing yourself to be distracted by your thoughts can have theropodical effects. Okay, not the best English pronunciation, but it will do the job. Now let's hit submit. And as you can see by this progress bar, the text corpus has 1150 phrases available and I have recorded 
one out of this textual corpus. Now the next phrase is printed on the screen and you can record the next phrase. Baking is very good for focusing the mind because it often relies on very exact measurements. And again, let's listen. Baking is very good for focusing the mind because it often relies on very exact measurements. And submit. For this demonstration, I will just use two or three phrases, but there is no fixed value how many recordings you should do. So just record hundreds and thousands of phrases and give your text-to-speech model training a try and maybe adjust and add more phrases afterwards. So no fixed value, it is a try and error process. And let's make it the last one. But we can eat in the summer on the balcony and in the winter in the living room. So. But we can eat in the summer on the balcony and in the winter in the living room. By the way, this would not be a good quality from the recording because I've used my webcam and uh, there's this echo in the room. So maybe use a better microphone. And again, check my lessons I've learned and my mistakes I've made by the end of this video. So let's submit it nevertheless. So we have three out of 1000 recordings. And now let's see where these recordings are saved on our local desktop computer hard drive. For this, let's open our Explorer. And here we have this clone Piper Recording Studio and an output folder followed by a subdirectory for your language code you have chosen for your recording session. So as I've chosen to record an English voice data set, this is an English folder. If you choose a German recording session, it will be DE, for example. And inside this is another subfolder. And here we can see text files and the audio in this WebM format. And if you take a look to this text file, we can see that this is the textual transcription of the recorded audio. But this is not the structure that is called LJ speech. So there's no WAFs subdirectory, no WAV file audio, and it's no metadata CSV file. But let's assume you are done with your recording session and would like to create this LJ speech structure out of all these recordings to train your own text-to-speech model. And now let's take a look to the README documentation on how to create your LJ speech package. Well, let's go back to Piper Recording Studio documentation and see exporting. And, and what we need to export in this LJ speech format is we need FFmpeg. On Linux, it's easy to install using the app get install package management. But as we are on Windows, we have to download FFmpeg manually. And I will put all the links in the description box below. So let's download our latest release of FFmpeg for Windows 64-bit edition. Once the download is finished and you unzipped uh, FFmpeg, uh, you'll find this bin subfolder. And as you can see, there's no installation wizard, but it is on Windows in my opinion, but please share your thoughts enough to copy this FFmpeg exe file inside the base directory of Piper Recording Studio. Let's go back to Piper Recording Studio and just copy the downloaded FFmpeg exe here. Let's go back to Piper documentation or Piper Recording Studio documentation. So FFmpeg now available. And let's install all the dependencies that are required to export our voice data set in this LJ speech structure. So let's take this one, go back to our command prompt and quit the Piper Recording Studio as we are done with the recordings uh, for now. Please make sure you are still inside your Python virtual environment and run Python module pip and install all the requirements export txt.
installing the export dependencies is finished. Let's go back to the documentation and run this export command. Let's adjust the path to your local settings. So in my case, this is this output path with the English subfolder as we have chosen to record an English voice data set. And now the path to the data set we would like to export it. So let's create a new folder and let's make it demo LZ speech um, export. And let's run this command. This is looking weird, but process is finished nevertheless. So let's go back to our Windows Explorer and see what we got. We now have this new folder demo LJ speech export. Let's go here. And you can see a really familiar LJ speech file and directory structure. So we have this WAF folder with an additional subfolder in this case and our three recorded WAV files. So let's just listen to one of them. Having complete focus on the receipt and not allowing yourself to be distracted by your thoughts can have theoretical effects. So as you can see, this is no more this WebM file. It is now a WAV file in the WAV format. Now you know how easy it is to create your personal voice data set to create your own artificial voice model. I'll put some links in the description box below too. And I really hope you enjoyed this video, you found it helpful. If this is the case, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you have not done already. And before I will share some of the lessons I've learned the hard way and the mistakes and failures I've made while recording my personal Torsten voice data sets. I'd like to say thank you, thank you all for being part of my wonderful YouTube voice community. And that's all for today. I hope you like it. And if you like, we might see us next time. Bye.